So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today, we're going to talk about the case of James Kimmons and whether or not you need to be accommodated for your commute to work. Uh, this is a really interesting case, especially coming from the Third Circuit and, and considering what we know previously about the ADA. So prior to this case, uh, with the Americans with Disabilities Act, we it, commutes did not have to be considered as something that needed to be accommodated. Meaning, if for whatever medical reason you could not make your commute, there wasn't uh, there there wasn't a, a need to create a, an accommodation. And so, what happened here with James Gibbons? Was diagnosed in 2016 with early cataracts, might qualify for surgery. The cataracts were mild, uh, and but even though mild cataracts still can cause vision problems, uh, optometrists wrote that he ought to avoid driving at night, even with glasses. In 2016, Kimmons was living in Racine, Wisconsin, and began to work at Chargers Call Center in Milwaukee, which is about an hour away. Um, I think that's on a slow day, or I guess it depends on where it is in, in uh, Milwaukee because they're not too far apart. Uh, but the shift starts at 12 and ends at 9, so that requires, uh, to, uh, that requires nighttime driving. So Kimmons asked his employer, which was Charter Communications, to uh, change his work schedule. Uh, start early, uh, start earlier and li leave earlier. But Charter actually granted it temporarily to begin at 10 a.m. and then to end at 7 p.m. Kimmons started trying to get the 30 days extended because he needed to still move closer to the workplace. But Charter had a consistent policy uh, with respect to work schedule changes but denied the request the same day. When Kimmons tried to appeal, he said assistance for the commute isn't required under ADA. And Kimmons was uh, encouraged to try public transportation, carpooling, et cetera, et cetera, and to consider all of their own options to manage their own transportation. As a result, he did what any good American would do is file a charge with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Uh, those efforts failed. EEOC filed suit against Charter, uh, alleging that the company violated the Americans with Disabilities Act by failing to accommodate. Again, at this point, this is fairly well established case law, in my, in my opinion. Um, the, for example, there was a case called Colwell v. Rite Aid, uh, where the plaintiff was a retail clerk in pharmacy working both daytime and evening. Uh, she lost her vision in one eye, made it dangerous. Plaintiff asked to be assigned only did daytime shifts, but the employer refused, sued under the ADA, and lost uh, because the employer, uh, because the district court granted the summary judgment for the employer on the theory adopted uh, by the, the, the Third Circuit Court, which is that the plaintiff did not need any accommodations to do her work once she arrived at the workplace. The Third Circuit repeated that in most cases, employer has no duty to help an employee with a disability with the method and means of his commute to and from work. While the Third Circuit Court ultimately ruled against Kimmons and for, um, for spec, uh, Spectrum Charter, they said, we prescribe no bright line rules as to when an employee's disability interferes with essential job attendance or whether, or whether particular accommodations are reasonable. Those questions are reserved for analysis under the facts of a particular case. But if a qualified individual's disability substantially interferes with his ability to get to work and attendance at work is an essential function, an employer may sometimes be required to provide a commute-related accommodation if reasonable under the circumstances. Well, that clears it up. There's the Third Circuit ultimately just said that there might be situations in which uh, the employer would need to accommodate a uh, commute, but didn't give very specific definitions as to how they might or when they might or what might be the trigger uh, for an employer to make those accommodations. Now, one thing that the court did offer up is that, for example, the employee could be off work for a more an extended period of time to find uh, to find accommodation that was closer to work so that they could come home earlier. Uh, and that is still not, I mean, A, that's not a, a job accommodation. That's not a reasonable accommodation uh, to help you do your job, which is all the ADA is. The intention behind the ADA is to uh, make people be successful and to do their job at a full capacity, not to 
you know, align work experience or align work time and make sure that people are hired for a specific area or anything of this nature. And so it's a little bit frustrating that the Third Circuit Court says that there is no bright line, uh, that there's no definable way and that everything is uh, fact specific because at that point, an employer may have a serious problem on their hands uh, and not providing any rebut facts as to why this one specifically was not fact or was not related to the ADA. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, this is another disappointing case from the Third Circuit, even though it what do was, you think about uh, today's video? It was found Please, in favor uh, of comment down uh, below. The employer like, in this situation. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, really share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. And I'll video. see you on Bye, the guys. next one. Bye, guys.